Thank you, John. And uh, yeah, I, I, I've known John, I think, about 20 years. Um, I was really early in my career. I was brought down, what, what most people are aware of me for is from the standpoint of founding and, and running the NASA Academy for Program Project and Engineering Leadership, Apple, or they call it in Europe, Appel. And I guess in French it means to help. And I actually had one of my European Space Agency colleagues saying, wow, that's great, to help, Appel. Were you thinking about that when you came up with the title? Well, of course, you know, not, but it, it works well. So whenever I walk around uh, France, you see these Appel to help and it feels like there's some kind of a sense of, of uh, knowing something. Um, early in my career, John was one of the people who uh, would get together periodically and had a dream of really focusing more on projects, uh, but, but what I would call the systems focus and the importance of project management, uh, you know, the leadership, the development, the communications, the how we work in teams, as well as the discipline expertise. And John has made a tremendous, massive contribution really to the field, and this is another event that, that you leave your imprint on, and so I want to thank John, I think we should, you know, take a little bit to thank you for all you've done. Um, when you work in a community, so knowledge, I'll make the direct connection to program project management because uh, when my uh, leadership, they didn't really ask me, they initially asked me to be the uh, first NASA agency uh, chief knowledge officer, and after I said I didn't want to do it, you know, I love being the director of the NASA Academy, two weeks later, the chief engineer uh, at the time was Mike Riskevich. He came into my office and said, look, uh, he had the look on his face, and so someone was in my room. I said, oh, looks like you want to talk to me. And uh, growing up in Brooklyn, I always feel guilty when people come in and it looks like uh, something serious is happening. I figured I must have done something wrong. And so I said, okay, what did I do wrong? He says, no, 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 you didn't do I love you, you're great. I said, okay, what is it you're going to do to me? And he said, well, you remember we had that conversation about knowledge Agency wants to set up a chief knowledge officer. You know, we've decided you're the person and all that kind of stuff. He started talking, he says, and, and we actually put you in two weeks ago. And it's been approved and everyone thinks it's a great move, so you gotta do it. So I immediately then start thinking in terms of how does this relate to the world of NASA. The world of NASA is fundamentally, you either help around engineering, you help around science, you help around the management of projects. And, and this audience knows that the management of projects is not just project managers, it's the community. And so immediately I start seeing uh, total connections. So I want to start with uh, a few examples, because usually the first question I get is, so why knowledge? How does that relate to projects? And to me, it's very apparent. Uh, this morning, woke up uh, earlier than I normally do. I'm more of a, a, a night owl kind of person. And I'm figuring, okay, I gotta get to Maryland. Parking is always a great university. My daughter graduated from here about a year ago. Great university, but the parking here, figuring out where to go to which building is always an issue. And then figuring out, do you wanna take uh, the Beltway? Do you wanna, should I go past Goddard, take Greenbelt Road, or, and then the stress. When we were in, on vacation, a few weeks ago, we went to Costa Rica, our family. Got to Costa Rica, got to the car rental place and said, okay, can you tell me your address so that I can put it into my Google Maps? And he said, oh, we don't have addresses here. And for the next two days, I'm flipping out saying, how do I figure out how to go from the mountains to the coast to the, you know? And my, Diane, my wife, you know, saying, relax, everyone does it, you know, you're reasonably intelligent, uh, kind of, my wife. Uh, reasonably intelligent kind of guy, we'll figure it out. But for two days, I'm figuring out I need to have some kind of a grid and then uh, we're on one of those, we're going to Poas uh, Volcano, walking around, I see uh, some folks from the States and say, how do you get around? He says, are you aware of Waze? How many of you know, are familiar with Waze? Okay, so, so many of you do. And I don't know, I start typing in W-A-Y-S, I taught, you know, I think maybe it's uh, kind of an offshoot of corn, W-A-I-C-E, I don't, you know. And finally I found it, and it's this incredible you know, basically locational device that not only tells you how to get to where you go, but it tells you. And so I figured, well, let me, let me put that in this morning. And it took me a different route than I would have. As a matter of fact, I've been in, living in Maryland for several decades now, and I took roads that I've, I haven't seen before. But got from Crofton to here in 30 minutes. It was, it was, it was great. It tells you where police are sitting. There's a police officer here. I'm saying, wow, that's pretty good. It tells you when cars are on the, the road. It tells you where traffic is, where to turn. So. What's Waze about? Waze is a part of that knowledge 
revolution. If you're running a program or a project, the key advantage is do you have the right tools, do you have the technologies? Can you find what you need to find really instantly? I mean, if I take the wrong route, I may be here in two hours and, you know, I don't get here, John's upset with me, it, it, it impacts relationships and all that. Technology is no different in terms of programs and projects. We tend to think of it that way. Another example, uh, normally I would be here. I love, love this, uh, this event, and I know so many of the folks here for a long time. I'm flying out to, um, to Vienna later this afternoon to support Roland Garros and his Happy Projects event and, and all of that. Um, and so I always think about planes. Now, I get anxious once I get on the plane. Because from the time that I'm sitting on the plane till take off, what, what do you think I'm thinking about? What do you think about when you're on the plane before you've actually pulled away from the, you know, from the, uh, you know, from the hangar, from the, from the gate? Mm. Yeah, I hear different things. I mean, I'm thinking about, is this thing really going to take off? Because, you know, if I get stuck in the States, Actually, it's bad, but it's not as bad. But if you're going internationally, really, if you have a connection, then, then that's a whole different experience. So I'm thinking about, so we're getting ready. It looks good. All of a sudden, I hear from the, the, the pilot saying, excuse me. And it's one of those, he's really happy, so you know you have a problem. And then the question is, how bad is this? Gonna, are we going to have to get off the plane? Is it going to be one of those things? He says, we have a slight problem. It'll cause a short delay. Now my anxiety is extra, extra because I'm wondering, do I trust this person? Key aspect of knowledge and projects is trust. So I'm getting this communication. I'm thinking about different things. When it comes back and says, we've identified the problem. It's a light bulb. And I'm thinking, oh, God, because you know what, what that could mean. Long story short, this goes on for about an hour. And he says, look, it's a, a light bulb. Unfortunately, this is one of those stupid government things. And I work for the government. So now this has become my problem. That th this. And uh, government problem, we've got this stupid regulation that if there's a deviance or there's something like that, even though this is not significant, has nothing to do with safety, then we can't pull away. Uh, so regulations, how does an organization, how does a project deal with regulations, policies? I hear, hear that all the time from, from NASA projects. Uh, and then they said, um, what happens is this light bulb and there's like, tens and thousands of different components for this plane. Everything is well documented in the, in the Boeing manual, except this is one of like four things that it, it, it's, there's nothing written down. So now it's a knowledge problem. Right now it, it wasn't documented. So what we're doing is we're looking for someone who's been around who could figure out and help us change the bolt. Thank God they got one of those people that comes on in the yellow or orange suits, goes back, changes the bulb, and we, we, we took off an hour. That's the other aspect we see in terms of the world uh, of, uh, of programs and projects, is that all kinds of things, not only the critical things, but the things that you'd consider smaller, become connected to regulations for good reasons, from deviations, how do you react to that? Do you have the, the information digitally available, or is it documented? If not, can you find the people? And on a more serious note, from a NASA perspective, about a year and a half ago, there was a uh, spacewalk from one of our astronauts, International Space Station, and uh, helmets started filling up with water. How many of you have heard that, that situation? Okay, smaller number, about, about a quarter of you. you. You didn't hear about it, fortunately, because it was, didn't lead to a death or something catastrophic. If you did, it would be, you know, case studies and it would be, be a classic case. It was, uh, it was a near miss, but it was very serious. What happened is, during a spacewalk, uh, the uh, the, the suit started filling up with water from the back of the head. Uh, it comes to the front, and it basically fills the mouth and gets to the point where it, you know, gets, it covers the nose, so you can't breathe. Obviously, you can't whip off you know, the helmet, so they immediately pull the person back. Thankfully, everything was fine. Stop starting to do analysis. But that, that, that's, that's a case of knowledge. It became more of a case of knowledge, and I got a call from the knife floor saying, we just found out that this same problem, to a much lesser extent, happened two weeks earlier to the same astronaut, the same type of spacewalk, and it wasn't reported. So you know how that goes. It goes to the central leader, it goes to the program project manager, then it goes to whoever's responsible for learning and chief knowledge officer. And by the time it gets down to, to me, the question is, you train these, and we'll fill in the blank, why, how do they not know that when a deviation in a dangerous environment comes up, they don't report it? So I said, okay, you know, let's figure out, let's hear what they have to say, what happened. And what happened is what you're going to hear in, in a lot of your projects. First of all, 
the individual said they were sure at the first time what the problem was. They were sure the problem came from the water bag that they have. Now, if it's a water leak and there's been problems on that, uh, it's not a significant problem. There's only so much water there. It certainly is not going to lead to a life. And they were sure that that was the problem. The problem was that their certainty was wrong. It was part of the larger suit, and it, it became obviously a very dangerous uh, situation there. Um, so why didn't they report it? One was that they, we train, we select our best people, we sel select our project people to do what when they see a problem? Uh, we tell them, you so bring us problems that are solved. We train, I mean, one of the things that we do in school is we tell people, solve those problems, and uh, if you do a great job, then, you know, because the last thing we want is someone who always brings us problems. And these are some of the best, uh, you know, seven people internationally, different areas, different backgrounds uh, selected this. They were, cert they were certain, and you can read the report. It's one of those 240-page reports. There's also a case study we've done that's accessible uh, that, you can, that you can download. Um, but they, they were sure of it. The other thing is, why didn't they report it down? Part of our policy, part of our standards, part of our knowledge management, part of our lessons learned, part of our risk, all these things basically say when a deviance comes up in a dangerous environment, you report it down. And what they said was, look, we were sure of the I issue, and we get measured, they didn't say this, but they get measured by the amount of time in a spacewalk. And that one, they were supposed to be out there for six and a half hours. So metrics, very powerful for both good and for, for danger. So we, our people, our engineers, our scientists, their project people, they want to work. They want to get things done. They lose schedule time if it's not there. And they knew that if they reported this to the project office, to the safety office, what happens? What happens? Things slow. Things get stopped. There's a lot, of, they said, there's a lot of paperwork involved for something that they knew was insignificant. So you could play this out in different ways. And so the whole issue of what Diane Vaughn called normalization of deviance is when something goes wrong, how do people react? And it's not always that people react uh, because they're stupid. It's not because they react because they're trying to create a you know, problem or they, it's often how do we prepare people? And one of the things I know is we select project managers who are smart. We select project managers who are naturally control freaks. If they're gonna fail, they wanna fail within their team. And as you remove yourself from your team, as you go, if you have to rely on other parts of that system, you lose more of that control. So we have to look at, at really closely in terms of all these different factors, uh, leadership of development, of education, of how do we select people, and how do people exchange knowledge? What motivates them as to what they bring up and what motivates them, them not to? Um, so that's kind of the, the background there. Let me go into, actually, are my slides up there? Okay. All righty. Oh, okay. So while that gets set up, the other thing I'll point to in terms of setting that stage is, um, I'm sure many of you are involved members active in the Project Management Institute. One of the things I track closely is they have, every year they do a thing called the pulse of the profession. Last few years have been particularly interesting because they focus increasingly on the responsibility of program project portfolio leaders, managers, implementers in terms of leadership, engagement, stakeholders, and this year particularly in terms of projects through knowledge. And why do they say this, this issue is so important? One is that we now live in a world that is so complex that we work in systems of systems, right? We work in terms of our success comes down to the ability to work with others and to work with different individuals and people and communities. And the information we get from others can either help us be successful or, or, or fail. Another factor is that almost everything we do, thank you very much, that's, that's, uh, that's perfect. That's an example of excellent uh, knowledge management. Hopefully you're flying on my plane to Vienna if a problem comes up, although I tend to, I tend to doubt it. Um, so we're living in a global age. Uh, so NASA, uh, and, and, and many of you folks have been here, 90% of our work is done through industry. Industry means supply chain. 80% uh, of our missions are international collaborations, international collaborations, which means that while we may be engineers, scientists, project people, and we talk some of the same language, it means different things culturally in different places. Uh, 
Uh, most NASA work is done across centers. Most of it is done in collaboration. It has to be with other government agencies. And everything that NASA has done is, is ultimately for science. People think of us as being an engineering organization, which we are, of thinking of a project organization, which we are, but everything uh, ultimately becomes a deliverable to the science community, and scientists are located where? Located at universities. So I always joke that a NASA event, a NASA party, would bring together people who would never typically like to talk to each other, don't understand each other, don't understand what they, but, but that's how you, and so the difference always comes down to how effectively do we work in that very broad, very distinct team? And so what, what PMI and the Pulse does, and we do a lot of communications, we often have a tr problem getting that communicated you know, to the larger community of what, what it is to do a project. There are still some folks, I was talking to some folks doing a NAPA report in terms of project management in government. And the biggest connection is that we still have people who think project management is simply implementation and execution. I hear people every once in a while tell me there's no connection between a project person and strategy in an organization. I try to keep myself from coming out of my skin. But, so let's, let's talk about that within a framework. Uh, what does knowledge uh, have to do in terms of the project kind of world? From a NASA standpoint, and I believe this is probably true of the organizations you work, you get a lot of outside help. There are stakeholders. There are people who look over and say, you're doing well, or they say, we got problems here. From NASA, General Accounting Office kind of tracks, they usually look at the costing area. One of the things that they said for over a decade is the issue of the fact that we're not really good at sharing lessons. Uh, we're not good at uh, one of the key issues that came up in terms of the 2011 Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel. ASAP is a congressional panel. They are why I'm now the Chief Knowledge Officer. They wrote, wrote a large report. It was basically a 250-page report all around our missions, programs, and projects. Uh, a page and a half the first time appeared in 2010 on knowledge. Immediately people started flipping out. What is, is this a new thing? And so uh, I was closest to that learning development academy, all that kind of says, what is this stuff? So we talk about it. 2011, they said, we recommend NASA establish a single point of contact or a chief knowledge officer to deal with issues. Their issues were two things. Uh, and one of the things is, what are we talking about here? So I went to the, the head of the, com uh, the, to the committee and said, okay, what is this really about? They said, we see a lot of great things at NASA. We also see areas of what they, they called uh, black space, you know? Uh, and they saw centers, they saw projects that really did not do a good job of learning, of development, of sharing lessons, of capturing them. And the other thing they saw was a lack of overall agency coordination. So they said, what we would like to see is a continuation of the good we want to see more integration. We want to see more consistency and formalization of knowledge exchange as part of the mission. Uh, we want to make sure predominantly in our organization that projects that are starting today are learning from what came before. Too many examples of projects that, um, that haven't learned from, from failures or mishaps or near misses or issues that came up. So how do you approach that? Um, I'm a believer that if it's important, it connects to the strategy. Uh, when I was talking to the Na NAPA folks, I said, they were asking, why do all government agencies not focus on project management? Well, because many or not most have senior executives who don't care about project management. They care about it from an execution level. Those are those people. You know, I, I, I went to great training at the Federal Executive Institute. It's four weeks long. And uh, I wrote a complaint. I said, this is a great leadership course, but you miss a key point, that we're living in a project age. And that, you know, so they, I got to meet based on that, you know, with uh, the person who was running it. He says, well, what do you mean? We I said, there's not, we go through four weeks here. We learn about leadership. We learn about policy. We learn about the Constitution. Uh, we learn about uh, fitness and aerobics and yoga and all that kind of stuff. There's not a word in here in terms of program project management. And they said, oh, that's because we have that at our lower level of courses. Now this, anybody who knows me, that, that starts getting me a little bit worked up, I, and they said, yeah, that's really a, it, it's a mid-level function in government. Again, totally missing the point. If it's not connected to the strategy of success or failure, if executives don't worry about it, then there's no connection there. And so this led to some of the things that we needed to do at NASA. One of the things I said is that I'll accept this, uh, but, but there are three things you got to do. One is that you need to indicate that we have to come up with a strategy, a policy, a governance for project management. And they said, so you want to be directed to write up a, 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 a policy. 
I said, yeah, not only that, it has to be within the program project management policy. It can't be a standalone policy that's orphaned and that's out there. It's got to be within program and projects. Why? Because NASA people take that very seriously. Um, and you need to direct it because I'm trying to start this thing up. And the second thing I'm going to ask for is that I need to have at each of our 10 centers in each of our four portfolio organizations in Washington, I need to have a designated lead for knowledge or a chief knowledge officer. You can call it whatever you want. Because if this is just a czar position in Washington, I'm dead in 18 months. And I know my leadership, they love me, I got a good reputation, I've been around for a long time, but I also have seen people take over these exotic titles in Washington. And people smile and they love you and you get to give talks all over the place. And they don't see any results in 18 months and then they step on the holes of resources. And everyone knows that this is a failure except the person who's bizarre until they, they take you out in the 18 to 24 months. So it has to work, it has to be in the field. Knowledge is 90% about what happens at the project level. At NASA that happens at the field centers. So I need you to say we need a strategy around this. It needs to be governance, it needs to be a policy within the 7120, within the program project management. Because when I meet with the community that you're establishing, I need to say that this is this important. If it's just a floating requirement, we're so busy it won't happen. These are some of the pillars, there's nothing new there. We need to be able to find knowledge, we need to be able to facilitate culture, communications, interactions. We need to have a way to find out what are some of the best practices. We need to encourage events like this. When I have a practitioner, when I have an engineer, a project person at NASA tell me that we're not supported to go to events. Uh, it, that, that's a weakness. I had a uh, young professional, uh, Annie Caraccio, great, great young person, been at NASA five years ago. She sent me a note a couple of years back saying, we, this is when government was going through conferences is, are bad kind of thing because of some, some scandals and problems. So it becomes a thing across all the government. She says, I can't go to this conference. Well, you know, we're going through travel and all that. She says, you don't understand, it's in Orlando. It's turned down for travel reasons. Well, Cocoa Beach is a 30 minute drive to Orlando, crazy stuff. So we have to be able to support the fact that we come together to learn from practitioners and we need to commit to get, you know, better. That's basically the strategy. Um, we now have a process in place where there are 10 chief knowledge officers at each of our 10 centers. If you go to the Goddard Space Flight Center, uh, which does a lot with, with University of Maryland, Ed Rogers, chief knowledge officer, does a lot of great work, particularly on after action reviews or what, what we call pause and learns, does a lot of uh, case study development, works a lot with universities. If you go out to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, David Oberheadinger is a brilliant, outstanding chief knowledge officer. He tends to focus more in terms of uh, getting projects at JPL to open up to each other. It's funny, but I get calls from project managers in the field saying, hey, I'm getting ready to start up this Mars mission. I said, that's great, that's fantastic. Yeah, he says, you know, but I can't get the data, I can't get the lessons from this other project at my center. Why, because project managers are selected to be control freaks and they're, they're afraid to, and for good reason. I don't say that detrimentally, I know the, the, the whole deal, I know how we select folks and all that. So he tends to focus on that. If you go to our Langley Research Center, Hampton, Virginia, Manjula Amber does that. She tends to be more in a science research-based organization. They focus a lot on big data, data analytics, more in focus on there. But there is a community that works these things. I tell any individual at NASA when I hear the number one complaint is we can't find data, we can't find information, we don't know how, who to talk to, particularly for young professionals, I say you have identified 10 CKOs at each center for the agency level. If you go to those folks, they know everybody. They know everybody. Just like if you're interesting in terms of project management, you know, I see uh, David Pelzer, we know each other for 20 years. You can ask David, hey, who do you talk to here? You can talk John, you can talk to Paul. You can... These people have been around tons of years, even longer than me. And uh, so they, they know who to talk to. And that's a large part of the knowledge that people at NASA are looking for. So the community becomes vital. Um, networks, uh, I said one of the things when you appoint me here, it means that I bring, uh, I bring a community. I don't really think you can be successful if you're locked into your organization. When I was asked to uh, work on the project management initiative 25 years ago, uh, one of the things I said is, look, I need, to get, uh, I need to get us to be members of the Project Management Institute. I think I saw Mike, Mike Morgan out there in the, the crowd. One of the reasons for that is that if it's just Ed Hoffman, it's just NASA, I'm going to get my own people saying, well, what do other organizations think? What does the association think? You've got to work with a community. Uh, I chair a federal knowledge management community in government. 
And we talk a lot about knowledge, we talk about projects, we talk about leadership, and we have a few hundred members. So I can now go to DOD, I can now go to Department of Energy, I can talk to veterans and see what we're doing. They can ask, for help. it's part of this community kind of thing. I share an international community with our partners. 80% of our work is with the space community, European Space Agency, the Japanese, the Russians, the Argentines, uh, Brazil, India. So you see where we're going. Um, I grew up at NASA, uh, had uh, one of my colleagues who attended one of my courses, I, I don't see where Mike is right now, but uh, came up to me and said, you remember me? And uh, no, he asked me, do, do I remember 1994? What I remember about 1994 is that those the last and only time in my life that the New York Rangers won a Stanley Cup. And it probably will be the only time, and so that's what I remembered in June. But he went to one of our courses, the Human Element, and had the picture. And it was, it was frightful to, uh, to look at myself in terms of, wow, I see what's changed uh, in 20 years. Yeah, he's got the evidence there. Um, I, I was always a guy who didn't believe about governance or policy. It's about people, it's about networks, it's about connections. I've seen, you know, where policy runs amok. Really important that for what we do in terms of projects, leadership, different components, there's some connection to process and to policy. And I felt if knowledge is this important, so congratulately it's being tracked, the IG tracks it, GAO tracks it, OMB, OPM. If, um, if my leadership sees it important, it's, it's got to be someplace addressed in the policy. Because I know what will happen. The current leadership will leave in a couple of years, and we have an election coming up in a year. So leadership will change. New leadership will come in, they'll have cost problems, and they'll say, why are we funding this stuff? Uh, I had a new uh, chief engineer appointed a year after I was appointed CKO, and I said, uh, congratulations, look forward to working with you. You know you'll be working with me a lot. And he says, why? It's Ralph Rowe. He says, well, I'm the chief knowledge officer, and the chief engineer at NASA is ultimately responsible for knowledge across the community. He says, well, where did you figure that out? He says, look at the NASA policy. Would you like to see it? It's only a couple of pages. Well, the two pages on knowledge is there, and then there's four pages of legal, legal stuff and connections. So I give him, he said, next time I see him, he's announcing the organization a week later, and he says the chief knowledge officer reports directly to the chief engineer because it's part of NASA policy. Power of governance is that it provides a continuity, for better and for worse. Um, Roles are important. Uh, just picked up uh, a book, uh, whole, uh, what is that called? Holacracy or something like that. And now I'm pronouncing it wrong. I haven't started it, but I think part of the premise is entrepreneurial. One of the key things is when you keep folks very entrepreneurial, very agile, very innovative, you do have to have certain things like what are the roles, what are the people doing? And so that's largely one of the things that we talked about. We established the knowledge map. Um, so we set up a community, uh, we set up a, a policy. Uh, we come together as a community two times a year. That was the other thing that I asked for the leadership. The third thing was I need to brief them. I asked for two times a year. Uh, at this point, it was my third question. They said, okay, you'll brief leadership, senior leadership, four times a year. That's their NASA parlance for saying, okay, you want to keep asking these questions? Uh, my reason, they thought I was asking to brief them so that I can keep them status. Again, I grew up in Brooklyn. I was keeping them status so that if things started going off the track, they were always in the room at least quarterly, and they couldn't say, we didn't hear from this. How did this happen? So you keep your leadership close. You keep your community close. And I can now go to any individual, any engineer, any project person, as is saying, if you're concerned, if you have compliments, if you want to keep things going, or if you want to raise something, we meet with leadership quarterly. And I tell every one of the center folks involved in the project knowledge that you have access. I'll be briefing senior leadership on June 17th. Come to Washington. Get in front of the, you know, and uh, they don't tend to do that, but it's available, right? Um, the other thing that we then started saying is what is knowledge at NASA? Um, you can approach this different ways. Uh, and Tim, when I was talking to the NAPA thing, I said there's tremendous resources um, from universities, um, you know, University of Maryland, George Washington University. Um, you know, Drexel does a lot of stuff. There's a lot from industry. Um, you don't have to have one way, but what I think you have to do is you have to have the community of talking together, and then it's like a series of maps. So PMI has a PIM back, uh, you know, um, different universities have different competency map that tend to be high level, generic for the community. At NASA, we, for our own community, then have a, uh, a map of our country. And some of the projects or centers will have maps that are a little bit more detailed. 
uh, but they have to track together. This is our map for project knowledge. We basically commit to capturing things, documenting them in terms of publications, in terms of case studies. We're great at case studies. No surprise there. Everyone at Project People are storytellers. They like stories. Uh, we get Harvard Business Review. We get universities that we want to do a case. And so we have hundreds of cases accessible that tell stories of successes and failures and, and learning from our people. Um, one of the reasons why we set up categories, I know I'm going to be asked before I even got there, how are we doing in knowledge? And the internal NASA IG review was very critical of NASA. And it was critical because up to that point, Whenever we looked at knowledge, we pointed to one thing. We pointed to our database of learning, the lessons learned information system. No surprise that when they did a study and spoke to project managers who are inherently and annoyingly honest people most of, the, most of the time, they basically said, oh, we only look at that database, a small percent, and only 30% of the entire NASA project management community had ever gone into the lessons learned information system that we said was the key driver of how we track knowledge, how we share lessons, and I said, this is a mistake. Before I was born, I said, that's not how, you know, we do it partly through that, but we do it through forums, we do it through conferences, we do it with outreach, we do it through cases. And, and when I met with the IG and I explained that, I said, but you don't, NASA doesn't have that. Right? NASA points everything to the LLIS, to the Lessons Learned Information System. Um, you know, that's, that's the, the second from the right or part of it. So we have a mistake is that we didn't really talk about the things we do. Uh, we do a lot of face-to-face. -face. An event like this would be face-to-face, -face, where people come together to learn. We have over 100 courses just in project management. We have dozens of knowledge forums where people come together. We focus in on different things. Uh, we have tons of online tools. We have a problem that area because we're so, um, every project starts their own tools. They want their own collaboration suite. They want their own lessons learned. When a project ends, all those resources go away, and you have dead links, and I can go on and on. So it's a, it's a mixed bag in that area. Uh, we have a lot of focus on alliances, networks, particularly with the, the young professionals who do a lot of the different uh, community and program challenges that go across the, the world. Have the a, a, a issue is lessons learned. How do you address learning? And then our, our tremendous weak area is search tag taxonomy. Uh, whenever I go and I'll go to the centers and I'll ask our folks in the project is saying what's working and what's not. I know now what they're going to say what's working at NASA is uh, let the senior leadership know we value access to them. And NASA is a good organization in general about leadership talking to the community. Like things like this, we'll talk amongst ourselves. We had Ralph Rowe, our chief engineer, about a year ago on the anniversary of the Columbia, who was a member of that engineering team. He went to each of the centers and basically said what it was like to be a part of that. Uh, the decisions that went in, the mistakes that were made, his own feelings. And I, I still I get people saying, that was great. We need our leaders to. One of the challenges to be aware of that is that you as experts, you as subject managers or people, you as managers, you tend to think you don't have anything to say. Because uh, when I speak to NASA folks, I said, you got to get out there. You get always asked the same question from, um, from Robert Lightford, as associate administrator. He tends to focus on the technical side. Ralph Rowe, the chief engineer. Charlie Bolden is our administrator, great people. They all say, what do we need to do in terms of uh, helping the workforce? They say, be accessible. So that's part of that. So now we have a focus in terms of those areas, and everything is focused from that. Um, we do things that are really geared towards uh, the social community, towards teams towards the individual, the ability to find things. We have a major effort on search and find. That's, again, our critical area at this point. We're trying to get more things digitally, particularly with the new generation. They learn from digital, just like I used Waze. They want the tools. They want the expertise. They also want the connections to hands-on assignments. They want the mentoring. They want the communities that are accessible. At NASA, we have communities that are uh, identified as technical expertise. So if you're looking for things around earned value management, you know who are designated. But then you have informal people who come together to work it. Uh, we're, this is of, uh, across the agency as a whole. It's kind of an ugly uh, kind of a map, but it does indicate who the people are and how they work it. Uh, if you want to find about anything that I'm happening, most of our stuff is open source for the world. It's km.nasa.gov. Um, still partners directly with, uh, with Ap Apple. Uh, Roger has taken that over, and we, we work uh, as colleagues and friends there. Uh, a couple other things I'll say. Wow, that's kind of a weird one. So I put together a map uh, uh, called the REAL, Rapid Engagement and Accelerated Learning. Uh, REAL, why? 
because I'm constantly being asked by the leadership, how can you accelerate the learning? So my generation, one of the key differences when I came on board at NASA, I actually had one of my mentors, Gus Wells, a beautiful guy. I was working at Goddard. He said, you know, you're great, but, you know, you're an impatient young man, Ed. I said, what, what do you mean, Gus? He said, you got to be patient. You know, you keep asking things. You have ideas. You have so you got to you got to flow a little bit more. I said, well, how, you know, he says, you got to understand the culture. I said, well, how long will it take me, Gus, until I understand the culture? He said, oh, about 10 years. I'm thinking, I'm in my 20s. 10 years is like, will you survive that long? And um, nowadays, it's, it's totally different in terms of you're out there, you're thrown within a couple of years, you're probably running a project at a, on a subsystem scale. So now I'm getting the, how do you uh, accelerate the learning? And the other ap aspect is, how do you engage people? If people aren't interested, they come, they go, they move around. Uh, that whole issue has changed. So knowledge to me is part of the larger project cycle. I won't go into this, but it's how do you deal with the team issues? How do you deal with the political? About a third, I would argue, of project success, program success comes outside of the organization. It's the political environment. The political environment will disagree with that. I think there's a speaker from GAO talking. Um, I argue that a third of project success now is controlled within the team. A third is controlled at the strategy of the headquarters level, the Washington level, whatever the head of the shop is. A third is outside of the control of the organization. I've seen uh, successful projects get tarred and taken apart because of political realities. I've seen projects that should have been shot, uh, you know, survive by political. So that, that realm changes things dramatically. So what's the map of projects within that kind of a framework? Uh, we'll go into these. Um, final thing, and then I'll, I'll go into questions, is so what have we looked to set up? We recognize that for a project to be successful, there are a couple of questions that are important. One is when you have a problem. How many of you work on projects in some capacity, whether it's learning or education? Okay, so all of you. How many of you have problems? <laughs> now, we're not talking about personal problems, you know. Um, but uh, we could be talking about that. So when you have problems, how do you find solutions to your problems? And how quickly do you find that? Now, those who are very successful project leaders at NASA, systems engineers, um, they'll smile and they'll say they always have problems. And in general, for most of them, they can find their problems really quickly because they have an extensive network and they'll get on the phone and they'll call people. Uh, for those who have joined us, a young professional, at least at NASA and aerospace, is usually defined as 35 and under. I'm trying to ex 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 you know, enhance that a little bit. but. Uh, um, but when I speak to them, usually they'll, they'll first, they'll, they'll, they'll Google it. You know, they'll look for the tools. And then if the tools don't work, then they'll look for them. And so one of the things I'll get is a twofold thing from folks who join NASA. Who are the people? They want to know who do you, that's why the access to leadership. It's not only so much what they say, it's the fact that I know who you are. I know who to ask to. I know who you know. It, but as important, increasingly important is the tools, the technology. They want to learn. Digitally, they want to be able to have 724. We do a thing called Masters with Masters. It's kind of Charlie Rolls thing. I'll talk to a few other people. Uh, we'll get 100, maybe 200 in a room, maybe 20. By far the largest audience now is those folks who will not even go to the NASA system. They will Google, Google it, they'll YouTube it, and they will listen to the talk on new technologies uh, in, at, at NASA. And so you'll get a couple of hundred in a room, you'll get uh, a couple of thousand online and it's available over time. How do we capture things? How do we make it available? How do we share? Do we share? One of the reasons for our failures has been organizational silence. That could be a whole section on that. Why do people decide not to share? Is it because they think they know the answer? This is a particularly a problem with smart people. How many of you typically work with smart people? Okay, not that many hands. Um, but it, it's more of a problem with people because smart people have been educated and trained to come up with a problem, with, with a solution. And so you'll see groups really talented searching. They don't want to raise it to manage it. They definitely don't want to raise it to headquarters, to Washington, because that means you haven't done your stuff. So sharing becomes a thing. I've heard a lot of project managers say to a member, so you don't bring this information outside our project till we figure it out. Don't bring this to another center. Don't bring this innovative idea anyplace because that's how we compete. So there's different mis mixed messages. And then beyond sharing is the discovery. How do people find what they're looking for? So you're starting a new project. It's innovative, it's new design. Typically that's, that's what a project is. You know that there are other people out there in the community. You know they're out there in the universities done research. You know industry who've applied things. You know there are people in associations. You know there are folks in your organization. How do you find them? And how long does it take? 
That's usually the differentiator, those two things in terms of knowledge as I see it. When problems come up, why did they come up? Uh, are you able to find the answers, the solutions, the tools that help you as fast as possible? And when you have great ideas, how quickly do they flow up across an organization? Um, let me stop there and uh, let me see what questions we have in terms of our time frame. So I think it, it's 9.17, so I go to, to 9.30. One of the things I'm working right, on right now, again, I get help from that congressional panel, uh, when they started up, they said we need to be formal, institutional, and uh, integrated. It's a great thing for a project. Consistency, disciplined, um, integrated. Uh, knew how to approach that. So we got into the green a year ago. Uh, interesting, the power of metrics. Um, if you say that a program is yellow, people, they will focus. They'll do any, everything to get to the green. If you, don't, if you just say you've got a serious problem, they, they may or may not address it. So the second time we got back in the yellow was a year ago, about this time, with that congressional panel, aerospace safety, really smart, experienced people who are familiar with aerospace programs and projects. Uh, they basically said, look, we, we visit your centers, and one of the things we hear as a complaint for your project people is that they say that there's so many requirements, there's so many competency, there's so many required training, there's so many things that they have to learn that there's no focusing point. Washington does a poor job. Leadership does, it's always leadership, by the way. Leaders does a poor job of identifying what they called risk prioritized information. Risk prioritized information. So I, I'm, a, I'm a knowledge guy, you know, um, you know. I teach at GW in the project program, I teach at Columbia in knowledge. I've, you know, John brings me here at Maryland, so I, you know, educated. So I don't immediately say I don't really know what you mean by risk prioritized information because maybe this is something that I should know. Maybe it's an RPI, kind of, you know, we come up with acronyms. And then finally, I figured out, okay, I'm not, I think I know, but I'm not sure. So I went again to the, the head and I said, okay, what does that mean? He said, well, we don't totally know, but we, he says what it means is that a complaint is, is that at headquarters, your leadership isn't making clear to the, what they're seeing in terms of project reviews, in terms of mishaps. Um, everything is out there is of equal weight. I said, now I got it. It's critical knowledge. And uh, what is critical knowledge? So I started uh, discussing with the key organizations in Washington. We have four mission directorates. Bill Gerstenmeier, great leader, heads up human exploration in Space Station, Orion, Constellation. Uh, John Grunsfeld heads up science mission, uh, the robotic missions, the Mars, all, you know, you know those, those kinds of stuff. And started getting together with these different folks. says, what do you worry about? If you're going to go to the field center and talk to any practitioner in any place, you got 30 minutes, what are you going to tell them to watch? And then we started discussing it. So we got a, a lot of different points, I won't get into this here, but it factored into four categories at this point. One is people. Biggest concern is that we have people who aren't communicating to each other, who aren't collaborating, who are holding back information. When they see something going wrong, they don't raise it. Typical thing that leadership always hears. If you got it, let me know about it before it happens, well before. Second thing, process. It's a project kind of a mindset. We have standards, we have guidelines, we educate, we have repeatable processes. Are we doing the right things? Are people using it appropriately? Are they tailoring it and adapting it appropriately? Uh, or are we missing certain things? And are we updating that? Uh, technical excellence. At the core, it comes down to having individuals who are expert at what they do. Uh, you know, a project is about procurement, a project is about cost, a project is about scheduling, a project is about risk, a project is about the hundreds of engineering disciplines. Any one of those areas, you have a capability in terms of education, skill, knowledge, updated skills. Or if you get somebody who's been there for a long time and basically doesn't feel they need to learn anything new, you got a critical risk there. How do we make sure that that's working? And then what, what you know, I called knowledge services, really I'll update that in the future, about knowledge and learning. Uh, a lot of the discussions from the leadership says, you know, I had one individual who said, when I started at aeronautics 30, 30 so years ago, I took a learning program for a week where I had all the leaders in aeronautics talk about what they're doing, their missions, uh, the challenges, the successes, the failures. And from that, I learned who the community does that I had to go to for the rest of my life. He said, are we still doing that, Ed? And I, you know, I said, that's a great point. I don't know. These things come and go. So critical knowledge for us and learning point is there's so much to programs and to projects. There's so much to the challenging missions we have. It's a complex world. We deal with cognitive overload. How do we prepare our people and how to educate them to know where to look or who to look for in terms of how we are successful when the pressure is on the gun? So 
let me stop and see what, what questions you have in the, um, you know, in the eight minutes uh, that we have left. Yes. Where do you see uh, the future of project management going? What, what changes do you foresee coming up there? What are the changes for project management? So I'm a, you know, I'm one of those people who likes to tend to think uh, of ideas, thoughts, possibilities. So I love the question. I think that project management um, is uh, is going to be focusing more not only on maintaining the expertise within the discipline communities that we have. Um, looking at different ways of making sure that the processes of those different aspects, like earned value, risk, you know, probabilities, different aspects that are a part of the core. How do people get that information? How do people come into it? How do people adapt? One of the key questions I get when I go to the field is, are we agile or are we disciplined? And the reality is, in a place like NASA, typically there's that mid-level. You've got to figure it out. You've got to be able to be adapted. So we have to educate people that it's not that black and white wall that it used to be. You can usually sell people, you're working human exploration, it's, 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 it's totally disciplined, don't worry about the cost, get it right, um, or, or hey, you're a technology base, your research, you know, you can be fast because you know, you can have limited, so how do people see those things? So I think within the disciplines is how do people understand how to bridge across the different areas? I think there's gonna be a lot more focus in terms of what we'll call the leadership strategic aspect of a project success a program success belongs partly part of that executive suite of decisions, of how decisions get made, why are we supporting a project, how are resources going. Uh, we can't uh, increasingly support the notion that if you're the first project manager, you're going to be replaced by somebody else who will get the resources to do it right. So strategy and working in that larger systems domain in terms of international industry, uh, government, academia. And so interpersonal knowledge exchange, leadership, and how do people find how we work together across the community. So it's a mixture of digital and the relational. It's a big question, but I think you see where I'm going. With the, the, I'm definitely not in the camp that project management is kind of when I got here 30 years ago, um, the notion was it's all totally about tactical execution and there's no connection to the senior leadership and there's, you know, and it's, I, that, 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 for most cases, I don't think will work. When you're called before Congress to report on a disaster, can they handle the truth? Thank God I'm not called before Congress. That's, that's for the administrator, for others. So I, I report to the congressional panel. You, you know, it's like anything. You get really good panels and get good leaders. My experience is, is that if you have people who are in auditing functions or political functions who have experience in a real program project world, then they want to do things right and they understand the trade-offs. If you get people who really don't know program project management or have no connection to that, they want to do right and they think they're doing right, but often what they do is create a lot of problems. So the truth kind of thing, it really comes down to who they are. When I'm, I'm brief in the Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, they'll ask me, you know, you know, honest questions. I'll give them honest answers. But it, it really depends on the individual, how well they're staffed, and I think how well we've educated them to understand what a project systems world is. Uh, one of the things I art, so when I was talking to the NAPA folks, they're saying, I, I really feel that any senior executive in government um, should, when they go to things like the Federal Executive Institute, the Executive Development Programs, universities, they should be required to have uh, education, uh, learning in programs, projects, and systems. Because then they'll know the dynamics. And usually where we run into problems, I'll see staffers uh, who really mean well, but they have absolutely no idea of life on a project. And so they'll, they'll set up a requirement that they think is to help a project, then it really ties hands and makes, you know, you know, creates a lot of kind of problems. But, but the true thing is really there. So it's easier when you're 32 years in the system and eligible because now, you know, comfortable to say what you want to say. But the reaction is really, again, the ASAP is wonderful, they're, but they're experienced people. They came from industry. They came from government. They came from market. They know programs, projects, and complexity. So when they ask a hard question, you can give an honest answer, and they, they adapt from that. But I've seen others where, you know, you can't. How well are they prepared? Jocelyn, I'll let you, you know, choose who goes. Okay. 
Uh, most people know what project management is and they understand project management, but often don't understand knowledge management. How did you educate um, those in your, in your organization and outside organizations about what really knowledge management and knowledge services is? Yeah, so I mean the first part I'm not totally sure I agree. I don't know if everyone knows what project management is in, in that strategic tactical way. I think they have a mindset of what it is uh, and that goes back to, to what I said. So we got to do a better job maybe communicating that. From the standpoint of NASA, I knew what was going to happen. So true story, I got the rumors spread before the announcement happens and um, I was concerned about the CKO thing for a couple of reasons. but. Um, but I knew I was going to go there, and I got a call the week before it was announced from uh, a friend. He said, we're hearing rumors. I, I said, yeah, those rumors sound about right. He says, you're not going to really do that. I said, well, why wouldn't I do that? He said, because what does knowledge have to do with project? And I said, you got to think, you know, think about what you just said. And he said, anyway, I mean, we don't, we're not going to listen to anybody in Washington who's going to be a, you know, someone who's going to try to tell us how to share and communicate. You know, we love you, but we're going to have to kill you. And that, that's a true friend. He's, and I knew where, where the person was coming from. So what I did was basically I felt I had to go straight to the centers. I had to speak to the project managers and the engineers. I had the advantage because I worked in the academy for 25 years. So these people knew me. And, um, you know, they knew they can be honest with me. So I had to approach it from two questions. The first question is how many of you folks have problems? And how easy is it and how easy does NASA make it for you to find answers? And then we got into the issues of why we're bad at search and find, uh, why we value leadership access, why we need mentoring, why complaints about uh, or how to improve the, the policy guidelines. And so it became a discussion of reality. So to me, I've tried to embed knowledge. I've really tried to embed everything into the core of NASA. NASA is fundamentally about the way we do projects. The, it, it's done typically through the profession of engineering, and it's done ultimately for science. So if I can see a connection to any of those and talk to that, then there. I spend a lot of time talking to safety folks, the risk folks, because risk is ultimately about knowledge. If we're talking about knowledge things and it never appears on the knowledge, then it's not all that important. So it goes to the problems. And if I can help folks working it, then it's a good thing. And if I can't, you know. I was fortunate because starting up the project management initiative 25 years, I had the same kind of thing. I had people saying, we like you, we're going to have to kill you if you take over this agency. We don't need to do training on projects. I mean, 25 years ago, it sounds really weird. People, you know, really young professionals, they take it for granted. We didn't have mentoring programs. We didn't have training. I mean, when you talk about a university teaching project management, I had some people coming after me. The usual thing, we like you, Ed, but, you, you know, this is going to stop, you know. So it's a, you know, it, it ties back to the problems. I guess we have time, maybe one more? Okay. Two more, okay. Well, Jocelyn, you're in charge. John said one, but I go with you. <laughs> okay. Ed, you had uh, made an interesting statement about one third of the project uh, being under the control of the project manager, one third being external, and one third yeah. being uh, uh, ad administrative. Given that NASA is so project related, and, and I'm assuming you tend to promote from within, how is it that, that um, Project management is not vertically integrated from top to bottom. Well, there is. I mean, there is. It, it is vertically. But, but, you know, everything changes. So why? So, you know, we, we, we tell amongst our community that uh, the most successful, you know, we do data, we do studies. The most successful project manager is the second one. Why? Because you start a program. The program, particularly at NASA, goes through a long concept design phase. Um, typically, we'll come up with a an estimate. We're asked to come up with an estimate. It's... It's years before the, the trade studies and analyses have been done, so it's an estimate. It's probably going to be an underestimate, and so, so it goes in different directions. And also, organizationally, typically in terms of NASA, you're not going to be, I shouldn't say take a project seriously, until it's at the point where it's at that development stage and implementation, you're focused on the other programs that are coming to it. So those get the resources, those get the, you know, the, the, the kind of funding, and uh, so it takes a period of time. So, you know, the effective project manager ensures that there's vertical as well as horizontal integration because they do that leadership thing while they, 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 they talk about the strategy. Um, but if you basically come from the notion, I'm a project manager, I need to control things, and I don't want Washington to hear things, and I don't want my leadership to hear things, well, then you can get into your own dance with each other where issues and resources you need don't get discussed enough. 
And so then the vertical integration doesn't happen. That's why I'm a big, I, I hear people saying, oh, I don't want to talk to general counsel too early. You got to, I mean, you got to talk to the lawyers because, you know, you know, if, if you get the right one, they'll help you. So it gets into that, but that, that's where that comes to. Final question, yeah. Hi, th this is a little off tangent here, but um, I work at EPA. I do a lot of open gov work. Uh, enterprise information management right. is what I do. So I'm wondering, uh, right now we have a plethora of O's coming up. We have a chief data officer, the yep. chief technology officer, the CIO, the chief data scientist. Um, I'm wondering uh, how at NASA, does NASA have, you say you have a chief engineer, do you have a CIO, yeah. do you have the CTO? How are you Absolutely. linking all yeah. these how does different that, silos? Um, so one getting? of the first people I reached out to was uh, the chief information officer at NASA. Uh, and particularly the, the deputy is located in Washington, the CIO is, is, is based out in Houston. And so Deb Diaz, Deborah Diaz, some of you may have heard her talk, she's very strategic. And we recognize we have, and, and many of her people, we have a joint area of concern. Um, as I see it, information technology is really critical in terms of the architecture of the web, of the portals, of the information systems, of the security. Uh, from a knowledge standpoint, we, we are really connected, I always argue, to the engineering, the project community. What they see is the things that are helping them are getting in the way in terms of digital. So, uh, you know, in terms of with, with, with Deborah, what we'll talk about is how do I get the community I'm representing to be heard? Uh, how do we make sure that we're not deploying IT things that the community isn't a part of? Uh, how do we get rapid feedback? And how do we support the need that we have on that information side or for some consistency and for search and find and all those. So we're partners. But I see the, dis the CIO is fun. At the end of the day, they have to worry about the, in uh, the architecture. And then they'll worry about the other things. I have to first and foremost worry about answering your questions. Are people collaborating? Are they sharing? Um, you know, do, we, do we have integration taking place in terms of that? And then we come together in that tremendous uh, connection. The chief technology is housed in different places. Uh, but technology is, um, you know, is worked, and so I'll meet with them in terms of also the uh, critical knowledge. And then we, so I'm heavily partnered. I am the only civil servant in Washington who's the chief knowledge officer, but it's unfair because I got 10 seat chief knowledge officers at each center, four at the uh, agencies and cross cut. Uh, we, we have the CIO, we have technology all a part of this, as well as safety, as well as library services, and so we come together and we, we partner. That's the quick answer. Yeah. If it's separated, uh, biggest mistake, I guess I'll end here, and this is true of project management is, is, is good systems integration and the community coming together. Where I hear people saying is we don't want to work those folks with those folks because they don't focus on the digital side or we don't want to work with those folks because they're all digital. That's the mistake. Ultimately, effective projects come around from people being able to work together, get the answers, tap into the expertise, and leveraging the best digital tools that are out there. It's not that separation is a real danger zone. And I said that to our community. I don't want to, you know, we have areas that we focus on, and that's, that's cool. But we don't, we don't uh, eat, you know, part of the, the solution. That system, and that, that's the biggest problem I see in any organization in government, is integration is so hard because Often for the right reasons, sometimes for the wrong, for the right reasons, people feel they have the answer, and if they go over there, you know, too early, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt them, and it's really that participation that's vital. So, thank you.